far, my people, welcome back again. How you that day? I hope this Salah break is good. You guys are enjoying yourself, right? And uh, meanwhile, guys, I try as much as possible, guys, as usual, to support your boy. Like this video, comment, share it on all social platform. Follow me on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, Adam's link. And make sure you subscribe and uh, click the bell notification to get updates anytime, any day I upload. And meanwhile, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are watching this video from. Firstly, guys, uh, just a bas a by side talk. Let me give you just a little advice. Me and myself, I'm going to work with this same advice. Please go and learn and work instead of going for that master in nigeria or why going for that master in nigeria please find time to learn and work the world is moving to another direction these guys who know how to do this menial job like plumbly uh plumbing uh, electric uh, electricians uh bleak lane and fixing of uh, hair condition all those guys are balling please go and learn it Though you might not be paying the pain in Nigeria because we don't have the dignity to labor. There's no dignity to labor in Nigeria. But one day, one day, you're going to repeat. Myself, I've already made up my mind. I'm going to look for someone out there who's going to teach me how to do bleak lane, plumbly work, piping, electrician uh, uh, electric, uh, work, and so many other stuff. Four things I'm going to learn how to do, guys. And just watch and see. I'm going to learn how to do it. So, I am categorically te telling you now, all this uh, graduate out there, please, instead of carrying that laptop, they do your, your stuff. Go and learn and work. I will do it. It pays. Though it's not paying in Nigeria, but it still pays. And one day, one day, you might jackpa, and I tell you, I bet you, you will enjoy it. Well, I have already considered that I will be doing that now. And meanwhile, guys, that's just by side talk, like I've said before. Let's talk about Sunday Boho. It's currently in custody in Benev Republic in Kotunu. Well, uh, the other day I reported about it just as every other uh, incredible uh, news outlet out there. I reported it and uh, somehow I was being called out. I was called source of name uh, in that video because they thought that I was lying. So the Boko is still in custody. Some were saying that he has been freed. He's currently on his way to Germany. So the Boko was arrest, arrested alongside his wife. And they are currently, or is currently still held in Kotonou as we speak. And the new report now is that he is crying like a child. That's exactly how Sahara report, uh, reporters are reporting it. And that's exactly how Punch newspaper is reporting it. All those headlines are not mine. Is the same headline you see outside. So, uh, firstly, guys, uh, I said, Ben, authorities chained Sunday Boho in cell, made him cry like a baby. Said the, the lawyer, a lawyer, Chief Yomi Aliyu, stated on Tuesday that his clients were chained inside the cell, tortured, the, tortured on the hand, and forced to cry like a baby. The lawyer confirmed that Ibuho wept when they spoke on telephone on Tuesday. So Ibuho lawyer said that Ibuho is currently crying like a baby because he has been tortured, chained, and that uh, they are currently doing some inhuman things to Ibuho. So speaking with the point, the lawyer said they chained him in the cell where they put him in Kotonou. There was a fast car at the airport yesterday when he was arrested. They hit him in the head and that same... They hit him on the hand and that same hand was handcuffed. He is in pain and he was weeping like a child when I called. I heard him. The wife too was put in a separate cell, but they didn't chain the wife. He was crying. The wife was crying too because he was writing, writing in pain. Seriously, we only pray that they don't pay anyone to kill him. You don't put someone in cell and still chain the person. You know he sustained injury and they didn't take him to hospital for treatment. 
We heard that he is appearing in court tomorrow, but I don't know whether that will carry that will carry it out. Well, Adai says on the boss lawyer. Some uh, some people no, it, it, it's just that it's, it's quite unfortunate. I know there are some people out there who are really really supporting Saudi Boho, but people think that Benin Republic will release Saudi Boho. Come on, they the same Benin Republic. Our uh, Mr. President Ibuari is building a rail to link Nigeria with Benin Republic. They the same Benin Republic. Who have wholeheartedly on several occasions showed their support to President Mohamed Buhari, and you are telling me that they should release, that they will just release something boho like that? Abba, this is politics, so they will play politics. And uh, Sa Sawolu, Governor Sawolu's aide, is out here mocking uh, Sunday boho. He said, "Do you know the work again?" It failed in Igbo land and it failed too in Yoruba land. That means also mocking Unandi Kano. For he said it failed in Igbo land and also failed in Yoruba land. That is coming from Joel, Governor Sawo Olu's head. And uh, meanwhile, guys, uh, according to the news, Buratai, the former chief of army staff, Buratai is currently working, negotiating with Benem. Republic to bring uh, Iboho from Benin Republic to Nigeria to uh, extradite him to Nigeria to face uh, justice, according to them. Well, guys, uh, we, we're going to see how that plays out, but let us be frank, guys. If the federal government is actually negotiating with uh, Benin Republic, we already know where this thing is going to. They're going to allow, they're going to release him to Nigerians. To Nigeria, sorry, I say Nigerians. They're going to release him to Nigeria. Let us be completely honest. I know there are a lot of people out there who honestly want this man to be freed. This man is fighting for the Yoruba nation. I know some people out there who really, really are sympathizing with him. But as you are sympathizing with him, just also, as you pray, just also know that when it comes to Nigeria, if the federal government will mean you, they will get you. That is to say, oh, all those stuff about banditry, kidnapping, and uh, killing in Nigeria. It seems like the federal government are not really, really serious about tackling it. Because if they truly, if they truly, it's based on my personal opinion, and uh, you are free to act on it or not, and uh, also it's a disclaimer. My personal opinion is that, okay, since... Uh, federal government moved swiftly to arrest someone like uh, Unanden Kano and also, uh, and also Sunday Boho. So generally, I can conclude and say, if federal government actually mean to arrest anyone, actually mean to eradicate any kind of threat, they have that political will to eradicate any kind of threat, I tell you, they will succeed. So kidnapping, banditry, and so on we have in this country, if the federal government are actually serious about it, they definitely will end it. So is it that they are deceiving a lot of us? That is the question that I am asking right now. Is it that they are deceiving a lot of us because they can move swiftly to arrest someone like Unadi uh, Kanu? Uh, also, Sunday Boko. I know some of the excuses will be like, oh, banditry are not it's not one person like they don't have this group they, there's no head overall head and also kidnapping there's no overall head but i still think if the federal government have the political will to go after them they will still end any kind of banditry any kind of threat to nigeria and to nigerians well what do you guys think like i've said that is based on my personal opinion and uh, meanwhile, guys, uh, check out this incredible video. I really, really love this video. In fact, let me just play it for you because uh, it's self-explanatory. Oh! 
We need job, not rice. We need job, no rice. Well, if you are wondering where this video is coming from, no, it's not in Nigeria. Apparently, that video was taken in Ghana. But we do not know the month, the week, the day, or the year, but it was in Ghana. And of course, you know, one of our heart desires as Nigerians is a time will come, we will start rejecting any kind of promises, any kind of palliatives, any kind of food, salt. They usually do that every election. Let me tell you, if they give you one bag of rice during uh, election seeking for your assistance so that they can, you can vote for them, I bet you, let me just tell you the truth and this fact. I bet you I should take that bag of rice eh, and they win that election. You know, you're going to, the number of days that you're going to suffer on this heart or the number of time, you will start counting that grain of rice. That grain of rice will act as per second. So guys, just know, as soon as you collect that grain of that bag of rice, your days of suffering have just begun. So guys, we should really, really think twice before collecting. And I hope I can be able to see this kind of day. Well, this is what uh, Dino Milai wrote about uh, the particular video. He said, Ghanaian youth reject free bags of rice from politicians and demand it for job creation. Can this happen in Nigeria? Nigeria youth grow up. Dino Belai, don't tell us as if you are not guilty of this. In one time, in many times, you have also given your constituencies, your constituency food palliative in order for them to vote for you let us be completely honest no politician is 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 is, is a saint in this country that is my own conclusion about it and meanwhile uh, talking about politics president Mohamed Bwari celebrated Salah uh, went to Eid in uh, Castina State Daura the village and uh, guess what he decided to walk back home trekking and uh, people came out, we're really happy to see him. We're hailing him. Say Baba, say Baba, say Baba. That is why that, that is what I am always saying. What can you tell a man whose his own people are so much in love with him? What else can you tell him? You can go on social media to run, but if this kind of man go around seeing people clamoring, we're really, really happy to see him. Then tell me, how can you relate or tell him that you are suffering on Twitter? Let us be completely honest. It's not as if I'm supporting it too. It's not as if, oh, I'm not suffering. No. I'm in it as well. But just be open-minded. What can you tell Mr. President Mohamed Bwari that you are suffering? When people, when people like this are coming out to greet him, to be happy with him, and uh, to clamor with him, you understand to say a lot of people trooping out like this to celebrate him. So this kind of man, you're gonna come on social media or Twitter to demand for good light, good food, all those kind of stuff. Uh, it's not as if I'm supporting us, so don't misquote me. We are just having a discussion about it. I find it that a lot of people misquote me nowadays, and I try as much as possible as well to still explain to you that don't pull your frustration on me. We are both frustrating as well. Understand? So, I cannot take the blame that you have for the federal government. No, I can't take that. So, we're just going to have a discussion and look for a way forward for Nigeria's sake. And then, check out this video of uh, a Nigerian living in Australia. Austria. Well, he was quite disappointed seeing Super Falcon coming to Austria to represent Nigeria. So, he took the liberty to take a video criticizing the Nigerians, the Super Falcons who were there. So guys, uh, let me play you the video as well. Speak to you. I want to speak to you people, please. I'm also a Nigerian. I live in Vienna. I seek uh, a soul here in Vienna, and I'm living here for over so many years. 
and you people are representing a terrorist government, you in Nigerian youth should be very ashamed of yourselves. Every one of you here should be very, very ashamed of yourself. I will speak to you. You should, you, it, it, this can't happen in another European country that their youth are representing a government. Stay quiet, stay quiet, stay quiet. A football, a football team should know that we are, we are not, we, 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 we are suffering the youth of Nigeria. Over 10 million youth, Nigerian youth are abroad doing nothing. And you people who are supposed to know the truth are representing Buhari, kidnapping his citizens, killing youth. Excuse me, stay quiet, Mr. Man. I'm speaking, I'm not causing any problem. Yes, yes, but Do you understand? Yeah, I am speaking to these youths who have refused to recognize. No, I will. If you touch me, I will call the police on you. If you can't touch me, I will call. Uh, that video was published and everybody have their own misreaction to it. People are mostly condemning the man, but honestly, I will not condemn it. Condemn him. No, 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 no. I will not fully condemn him. Honestly, I won't. You know why? I don't know what he has been through. Let us be sincere. If UK is going through the quarter of what we are going through in this country, do you think anybody will represent the country called UK? If USA is going through the list of what they are, we are going through in this country, do you think anybody can proudly carry the USA flag? Let's be completely honest with that all. Though, and also, this Super Falcon are representing Nigerians, not Nigerians. They are representing their country, not Nigerians. It's not their fault. I do not blame them as well. So, if we are reacting to this, eh, eh, let us as well try to understand where that man is coming from. It is painful. People who, who their people, who their brothers and sisters has been kidnapped. I bet you, if you meet them, to ask them, how far, come and represent your country, they might cause you. People who insurgency have killed their people, their, their brothers and sisters, their mom, their dad. Just meet them and ask them. See, sometimes eh, it's easy to talk, 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 talk while you are not inside. It's easy. It's easy to talk while you are not inside. So, guys, I know some of you will be like, oh, I should be, why not my supporting? I'm supporting him and also not supporting him. So, I'm in between. I'm not just going to fully castigate him. No, I'm not going to do that. Because I know what a lot of us are facing in this country. And it's about time we say no, enough is enough. We are not united. Tell me now if this super falcon decide not to go because, or let me say super ego, decide not to represent Nigeria because of the injustice. Other people will replace them immediately. That's to tell you how Nigerians do not love themselves. I'm just completely honest though. Just being blunt. Let us be honest. So you can as well leave your comment below as well on how you feel about it. And uh, I'm not going to owe any grudges. It's your own opinion as well. And um, BY, uh, uh, FKK, Femi Fani Kayode, this is what he said concerning this particular video. He said, the question is why do our female national team have to travel by public transport in a foreign country? Can they rent a private bus? Secondly, why do they not have bodyguard and some security given the fact that they are women in a foreign land and they are representing our nation? Next is an assassin. No matter how anyone feels about Buhari or Nigeria, I think it is despicable for the man to attack and subject our players to such a vicious verbal assault and to insult our country if he were a foreigner and not in nigeria he would have been rightly accused of being a racist it's not but a global little foul mounted and wood self eating uncle tom is what malcolm else called a housing n i despise such people if things are bad as home at home does that mean every nigeria must be insulted does this uh, this man have no self-respect or sense of uh 
patriotism or decency, things may be tough in our country and we may be going through hard times, but no one has the right to insult, humiliate, threaten, talk down to and treat all our, our people with contempt and disdain. Where well, you said a lot of things, but like I've said before, if you are directly have been affected with this disjunction and kidnapping, and your person have been directly involved, honestly, you will think twice. Yeah? But all the same, God help us all, and God show us the way. And uh, to end this video, let's move to entertainment. And this one's coming from Whiskey Baby Mama. Someone asks her, a second baby mama, someone asks her, King Ayo is getting black. Please try to do something. Love you. Uh -uh. <laughs> well, she responded saying, I'm literally getting sick and tired of hearing about my son is getting black. Like really, it's summer out here and it's hot as hell. And he played outside every day and be at the pool. So of course, his skin tone get darker during summertime. Between King Ayo have his papa's skin color, not mine. Like, do you all want me to bleach my baby or something? What the hell? You know, I make him bleach the baby. Me, they use bleaching cream on the baby. Let the girl know so that it was that to the user. And uh, you know, uh, this particular guy who was ranting the other day, uh, yesterday, after he divorced his wife, uh, Zlatan, uh, someone that, uh, the, the woman that Zlatan used on this uh, video, Bonlanli, well, they are the baby, and apparently this woman, the girl is his second wife. He has a wife in SA. Well, he divorced him. He ranted a video yesterday, and then he came out again to post a video of him crying, saying that nobody wants to hear his own side of the story. Like, you, everyone is hearing your own side of the story. The lady has not even spoken about it yet. So why are you crying? Well, guys, thank you very much for watching, guys. It's your boy, Adam Slink, and have a wonderful day. Stay